Hello everyone. It's a quiet afternoon here in the homestead, so uh, I thought this would be a good time to do um, my uh, video this week for the Movie Reviewers 100. Uh, this uh, collaboration channel is staffed by myself and six other guys, uh, each of whom uh, uses a different day of the week to post a review uh, on a common theme. Uh, this week our theme is Christopher Nolan, the director of such films as Inception, Memento, The Prestige, three quite success successful Batman movies. Um, but I'd like to instead focus on uh, his earliest film, uh, which could be considered a feature film, even though it's just nine minutes longer than a whole hour. <laughs> 69 minutes is what it says here on IMDb. But you'd never know it if you weren't looking at your watch, because it packs in enough story and enough twists for a feature film that's a full two hours long. Um, it's called Following, uh, and it's shot in black and white film. It's actually the standard aspect ratio for uh, old films, uh, the square, the old square, rather than uh, even something even moderately widescreen. Um, Nolan's an old school director, really likes shooting on film, doesn't like using a lot of digital uh, processing uh, because he wants to preserve the look of film itself. That's why his movies always look so fantastic. Um, he had three pretty much unknown actors uh, playing the leads in this movie. Um, Two of them, uh, Lucy Russell and Jeremy Theobald, went on to uh, have brief roles in Batman Begins. Um, but Alex Hale, who plays the uh, sort of antagonist of the movie, excuse me, I'm just, uh, sorry, Alex Haw. Um, I'm not really familiar with any of these guys, that's why I have to keep checking the IMDb page. Uh, Alex Haw um, didn't do anything other than this one film, which is a shame, because he's the best guy in the whole movie. Um, the main character, the... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, some of these people don't have names here, so I have to refer to them by the actors. Jeremy, the uh, actor Jeremy plays the main character, uh, and he is a guy who basically is just sort of wandering around London, not really doing a whole lot. He's sort of gotten the habit of picking a person out of the crowd and just following them wherever it is they happen to go, but only following them one way and then leaving it at that, not pursuing them over the course of days and weeks or whatever to find out more about their lives. He's a little bit curious about other people, but instead of talking to them, he will just follow a stranger to whatever location they're going to, to their home, to a restaurant, to their business, whatever, and then he just leaves it at that. But then he starts to break his rules uh, and uh, follow the same people around um, uh, more than one time. And this is a mistake because when he follows Alex Haw around, Alex notices him and strikes up a conversation, which is something that Jeremy didn't actually want. Uh, by the way, Alex Haw's name in the film is Cobb. That's his character's name. And it just so happens to be the name of the Leonardo DiCaprio character in Inception. Um, so these two guys, they sit down, uh, and uh, first of all, uh, Cobb challenges our uh, protagonist uh, and says, why is it that you're following me? He's like, no particular reason, really. So Cobb lets him in a little secret. He likes to break into people's houses and look around. Not actually steal anything, but just kind of look around for a little while. <laughs> um, or sometimes he does steal. It's just another little habit of his. Um, and he invites uh, the main character to come along with him. Um, on a couple of occasions where he's going to, you know, break into people's houses or, at le or apartments or at least find the key to let himself in so he can have a look around. Now, to say more about what happens in this movie would be um, a disservice to those of you who haven't seen it because the revelations and the twists come like every other scene. So your idea of what the movie is really about actually changes you know, every every few minutes or so, every couple of scenes, the movie starts moving in a different direction. Oh, I thought it was about such and such, but it's actually about this. Uh, it turns into this big mystery, and people have strange motives, and you don't really know what's going on, and then you think, oh, I know what's going on now, I understand what's going on, and then it turns in a different direction. Uh, it's really crazy. Um, so yes, I would recommend knowing only that much before going in to see the film. Uh, I would also um, suggest that although this movie has three different timelines running simultaneously, you won't be confused at all by it. Because despite the fact that they're all in black and white, unlike Memento, uh, the main character, played by Mr. Jeremy, uh, actually has a different look for each one. In the first timeline, in the uh, oldest timeline, the, the first timeline chronologically, he's got long hair and he's unshaven. Uh, in the second one, he's got short hair and he's clean-shaven. 
And in the third one, he's got short hair and he's clean shaven, but he's a little beat up, so he's got bruises on his face. And that's a really, really, you know, easy way to tell the difference between the three different timelines and what is actually happening when. Um, Imagine it was quite complicated to write, uh, but uh, it's easy to understand when you're watching it, um, which is uh, which is great. The Prestige is probably his uh, Nolan's most complicated movie structurally. That was adapted from a novel, so there's there's some really complicated uh, and confusing twists and turns in the chronology there. But following is actually pretty straightforward, uh, complicated though the concept may be. Um, so if you have a chance to uh, check that movie out, please do. Um, uh, it's uh, one of the probably his most obscure movie. You know, insomnia doesn't get uh, doesn't get mentioned a lot, but um, yeah, following even less so. Uh, but it's a really good one, and uh, it's short too. It's not two and a half or three hours long, and like The Dark Knight Rises, so it uh, goes by quick, but it packs in a lot of story uh, for its length, which is a good thing. Um, so that's my review this week. Uh, we've got a new theme starting tomorrow, so I hope you'll tune in for that. And if you haven't seen the other guys, uh, Christopher Nolan movies, uh, check them out. Also, I, uh, some people might be angry if I didn't mention I also did a whole series on Christopher Nolan movies uh, this last summer. But you don't need to watch those, you know. Just watch the other guys' videos, you know. They all have different opinions, and they've all got different faces, and they're shot in different locations. Unlike me, I, I, you just basically are looking at me the entire time, you know. And some of those videos I do on Christopher Nolan and go on a really, really long time. I think my Dark Knight Rises review was about half an hour long. You don't want to. You don't want to sit through all that. Go watch the other guys' videos. You know, go watch the other guys on this channel. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in, and I'll see you again next week on Thursday. Bye.